Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, I'm doing a follow-up to my fireplace TV wall mount. In my last video on this, I showed how I attached my TV wall mount through my brick fireplace. And since then, I've gotten a few questions on how I finished it all up. The number one question was, what did I do to hide my cords? And the number two question is, what would I have done if I didn't happen to hit studs behind the brick? So thanks to everyone who left comments and asked questions. To answer the first one, I didn't actually ever hide my cords. Since I've finished this TV mount, I bought a new TV and changed it out and still haven't hidden the cords. So, so in this video, I'm going to see what I can do about hiding the cords. I think I'm going to have a bit of a hard time making it perfect. I just want to make it acceptable. After that, I'll talk about what I would have done if I hadn't hit studs behind the brick. Before I can hide my wires, I need to know where the wires are going to go to. Currently, I've just got my stereo and my PlayStation just sort of sitting loosely on top of, uh, you know, a tote and on top of my speaker, and I want to clean that position up before I really try and figure out where the wires are going. I had a look behind the TV just to see how much space I had to work with, and I think right away that what I'm really going to need is longer cords. I want to make sure that the way I have this set up, I'll be able to turn the TV to face my kitchen, as well as lift it all the way up above the fireplace and all the way down. I want the full range of motion of the TV mount to still work with how I put the wires. The wires that I have to deal with are the main HDMI wire, I have the power wire, and I also have an optical audio cable. My plan is to run the wires from their positions on the TV to the center of the back of the TV and along down the arm. As I mentioned before, I've got to decide how I want to keep this stereo equipment. Right now, sitting on top of this tote isn't really a, a final solution, so I've got to come up with something. I figure I'll build myself a small cabinet. I packed up the stereo equipment, removed all the cables, took away the tote, and measured the space to see what I had to work with. I decided I was going to build something about 18 inches wide and about 25 inches tall, with a shelf about one third of the way up. Went to a surplus store called uh, Princess Auto and picked up a couple longer cables. So I've got a 15 foot optical audio cable and a 15 foot HDMI cable. Bought them both from the surplus section, which meant they were a lot cheaper than they would otherwise be. I found some scrap construction plywood, some 3 quarter inch and some 5 eighth inch, and ran it through the table saw to get it cut down to size. After cutting it, I hit it with some 80 grit sandpaper just to clean it up so there would be no slivers. The 80 grit is still pretty rough, but I'm not really worried about the finish overall. This cabinet is going to be semi-temporary. I just want it to look not embarrassing to someone who walks through the house. Sanding took probably about an hour to do both sides and all the edges of each of these pieces. I always find that sanding is a good time to put in some high quality earbuds and listen to some audio. Uh, books, podcasts, that sort of thing. Makes the time fly. With all the sanding finished, I did a rough layout to decide where I wanted the shelf. I decided on about 8.5 to 9 inches, so I measured that out on both side pieces and drew a line. I started by gluing the center shelf, just to sort of keep things in one place, and moved on to the top and bottom. I used bar clamps to hold things in place while I got everything else glued and attached. With a clamp holding everything in place and everything glued, I used an air nailer to make sure nothing would move and to make sure everything was secure. I also glued and air nailed a piece of 3 8 inch plywood onto the back. This will make it nice and strong and keep it square. I marked a space on the back for the cables to go through and used a drill and a jigsaw to cut it out. The edge of the plywood on the back wasn't square to the frame, which means that one of my cuts wasn't straight, whether it be the pieces I assembled or the piece I cut for the back. I just took a jigsaw and just shaved off the edge. And then hit that with a sander just to clean it up so there'd be no rough edges and it would look fine in the end. And here's the finished piece. I think this is a perfectly acceptable upgrade to a black tote, so I'm pretty happy with it. I brought it inside for painting. I let it sit for about an hour before doing this just to make sure the glue had a chance to kind of dry, but mostly the nail is going to make sure it doesn't move. I'm going to be giving it two coats of a semi-gloss black. This should uh, sort of match any equipment that I have in the future, as well as a lot of the wood grain show through. I wasn't shy when it came to the amount of paint that I was using. I made sure the brush was quite saturated and wasn't afraid of putting too much on. I want the paint to really soak down into the cracks of the wood to really cover it nicely. So I'm doing two coats like this and right now the thicker the better. 
after letting it dry and then giving it a second coat. I let it sit overnight and here's how it turned out. I think the quality of this is completely acceptable for what I want to use it for and for the amount of time that I plan on using it. It was cheap, done in a day, I think it looks just fine. I cleaned out the spot where it needed to go, gave it a test fit, and tested out how the amp sits inside the shelf. Happy with that, now I know where my wires need to get to, I can move on to figuring out how I want to attach them along the fireplace. It was hard for me to video this while I was working on it, you're basically just going to be looking at a video of my back. So let's jump ahead to what the finished result was. As a finished product, I found that this is a acceptable solution. I don't really want to drill into the concrete or into the stone to try and hide these wires. I ran each of the cords to the center of the arm and used twist ties to bundle the wires and attach it to the arm. There's a little hook on the underside of the arm that lets things attach to it. I used a length of 14 gauge electrical wire wrapped around the base of the mount. This way I could feed the cords through and as I move the arm around things won't fall off the mantle. I will later on probably bundle these wires a little bit more tightly along the mantle but for now they sit just fine. And the TV itself covers the mantle so I don't really see them. Because I left the wires nice and loose when I attached them to the arm, they have the full range of motion. Nothing pulls and nothing is shifted around as the TV moves in the up position to the down position. And I can still pull this around to any of the angles I could before. Later on, I'll probably come back with some kind of a cover piece of vinyl or something that would just make this less noticeable, but that'll be a long ways out for me. This works just fine. I'm pretty happy with this as a low cost solution. I know that people are probably more interested in how I physically would hide the wires, but just not being able to see them is good enough. So in my scenario, this is pretty plain and simple, but it works for me. With that same logic, the can that I made, also very plain and simple, and it works for me. It's no fine woodworking project, but none of my friends will ever notice that it's not, that it doesn't have a faceplate or that it's not made of hardwood, solid wood. So this is a perfectly acceptable solution for me for now. So to speak to how I was going to mount the TV without actually hitting a stud, because I didn't know if I was going to hit a stud, in fact I expected I wasn't, I had found this product at the local box store. So what it is, is a anchor, like a drywall anchor, except it has a long nylon handle on it. So the idea behind this is that these two, this nylon handle here comes apart, and you can flip this long ways like this. This lets you, would let you feed it through a hole and then correct it and then pull it tight. So there's no bolt that goes with this, so you're supposed to supply your own bolt. My plan was to use a piece of threaded rod. Again, not knowing exactly how far I needed to go and how much space I would have on the other side. So I picked up a piece of threaded rod that was the right size. This would in theory feed through all the way down to the anchor. I could thread it in as far as I figured I needed. I could fit that through down as far as it needed to be. I would cut off this nylon stuff now that it's there. And with this sort of along, you know, in this kind of area here through the wall, I can now cut off the threaded rod here and put down some nuts, there's some nuts on the top end to pull it in tight. So that was my plan and you know whether or not this would have held I don't know. It's not the, the same high tensile steel as, uh, as a lot of anchors are so this was my plan and I didn't end up needing it. I did already buy the box so I will keep that. But I think it was a it would have been a real viable option to make that make that work. So for me, I had to go through a layer of two and a half inches of, of rock and then a layer of plywood. So this would have been sticking out the hole probably around here. So uh, this product I think was actually a pretty interesting idea. I'd never seen it before until I came across it here. It, this, the, the version I bought used a half inch bolt. Um, it's rated for 265 pounds. I don't really know how that equates to a, a, an arm, like a levered arm with a, a weight on the end of it. But it has all the specs, and, but the instructions have all the information you need, uh, the size of bit you need for the hole, uh, how much weight it can, it can withstand. Instructions on the side as well tell you how 
to use it. Yeah, I was uh, kind of happy to, to come across this product. So, Toggler Anchors. They do come with bolts. I forgot to mention the bolts were just not going to be useful for me. Came with these guys. So, so that's the intended depth, I suppose. But it lets you get, you know, a full. This looks like what six inches, five inches, six inches. That's that product. I, uh, I think it would have. I would have absolutely used it if uh, if I hadn't hit a stud. So, so if you don't know where a stud is and you're not going to be able to line up with it, this might be a, a viable alternative. But I, but I haven't tested it. I want to say thank you to everybody who has commented on these videos, uh, asked me questions about how I was hiding the wires, uh, how I was going to anchor the, the TV if I didn't hit a stud. It was really great to see a bit of community. It's my, my first time doing a comment response video. So thanks for watching Little Home Projects. Thanks to everyone who commented. Uh, if you're new to Little Home Projects, please hit subscribe and like the video if you liked it. Thanks for watching.